For a passive range hold, the goal here is going to be using your extremity or gravity pulling you into your passive range of motion and then using the muscles of that joint to hold that joint in the position or try to maintain that position, releasing the external support and then holding for the prescribed amount of time. For hip external rotation, that we're going to show you three different positions from hardest to easiest during which you can perform these passive range holds. These are a great exercise to try to close the gap between your active and passive range of motion, get ownership of as much of your range of motion as possible, but also they are a good assessment to see what the gap is if you don't know. So in the first position, the most difficult, I am in the 90-90 position here with my knees and my hips. The back leg can be a little more forward, whatever, I don't care. Um, it's not super important because we're working on the front leg. So for a right hip external rotation passive range hold, you're going to assume the position. This is going to be the most difficult. Your knee is going to stay on the ground. You're going to take your left hand under your ankle, bring it up into as much external rotation as you can, making sure that we are not hiking our hip and losing our pelvic control because that would be adding our spine and this is not a spine exercise. So find your passive range of motion, keeping your knee down. So we're thinking about external rotation. Contract those muscles like you're trying to lift your foot off your hand. Slowly release your external support from your hand and try to hold the position. Now, I'm very close to the ground, so it looks like I wasn't doing anything, but I was still working really hard to maintain the position, so I would still get something out of that. So if you fall very close to the ground, you just wanna make your foot feel light or you want to find a little bit easier of an exercise, it's up to you what you would prefer, but it's okay as long as you are really working some of those muscles that are externally rotating your leg without compensating in your pelvis. So you're gonna hold for the prescribed amount of time and you can either come all the way back down and reset, or you can not come all the way down, grab it and reset. That tends to be a little bit harder. It's up to you what you would choose for your difficulty level or what your programming says. The next easiest position is going to be grabbing a yoga block and leaning out of your range of motion slightly towards the right. Same exact concept though. You're gonna grab the leg, keep the knee down. Do not let this pelvis hike. Contract those muscles, hold as you release and hold for the prescribed amount of time and you can do your reps there. The next easiest position is going to be completely on your side. My elbow and hip and knee are in alignment here. My pelvis is rotated forward, so both my hips are on top of each other. Then from here, I'm doing the same thing. Knee stays on the ground. Externally rotate that hip by pulling into passive range of motion. Now find my hip muscles, try to externally rotate off my hand. Slowly release, hold the position and parachute back down for your first rep. That is going to be an easier position. Obviously, you may wanna start in an easier position, but as you get more strength, you can progress into the more difficult positions. Just make sure we do not feel any pinching in the front of the hip joint, because it's closing angle stuff that we really don't wanna push into. Other than that, you can um, kind of challenge yourself quite a bit, but just make sure, again, that our pelvis is not joining, because that would be adding spine stuff, which we're not training this exercise. So. Prescribed amount of reps is typically gonna be about three to five for about three to five seconds, but make sure you follow your programming and try to progress every single week.